Hi, everyone. Thank you for your coming. So my name is Margot, and he's my colleague, Lucien. So um, today we are going to talk about, uh, so we are, sorry, we are a French uh, search engine integrator. And today we are going to try to, uh, to adapt a search engine, a classical search engine, to a voice search engine. OK, so uh, just before we, st we start, I would like just to ask a question to the audience. Uh, um, who speaks German in the audience? OK. OK. And uh, who, speak Fran who speaks French in the audience? OK, I'm, I'm surprised. <laughs> so uh, yeah, thank you for coming. Uh, thanks to Berlin Buzzwords to, for having us, uh, for organizing the conference. And uh, yeah, happy anniversary to Berlin Buzzwords. They are 10 years now. Uh, I would also like to give a, sh a special thanks to uh, the Odilian team, uh, part of which uh, is in the audience with us, and they helped a lot with uh, bring it up, bringing this up for you. And so Usema that helped a lot with the demo, uh, Vincent, Alexei. Uh, so yeah, here we go. Uh, so let's back first before to go to search uh, to voice search. Let's go back first to what we know already. So here is a let's call a classical search engine. Okay. So here is on a large screen. What we call large screen is uh, on a laptop, for example. So here you can see you have a lot of information display. So as you can see, you have all your baskets and all your profile, for example. Here also, of course, you have all the results. So you can see you have like four or five results that you can display. Here we, we see like we can have like a marketing shortcuts like to push some uh, content. And here on the left, we can see we have um, facets uh, in order to narrow the, the, the result, in order to help the customer to go yeah. directly to what he really wants to. So the screen displays only two facets there, but you notice that there is a scroll bar, so you have plenty of space. They're actually like... Six or, six or seven facets there, and uh, 10 or 12 results on the first page. So here's another example. So here you have the, what we call auto-completion. So you just have to type like three or th uh, two or three letters, and the search engine will give you some suggestion, product suggestion. Uh, yeah. So you notice that the input is not verbose. <laughs> you just typed three letters, and the engine answered. Yeah, the goal here is really to show you all the information that we can provide to, uh, to the users. Here's another example, Agendas. Uh, nobody knows how to write that, what it. So the search engine will give you, like, um, it suggests you another product uh, in order, once again, to help the customer, the, the user, to find the product he wants. So the goal is really to show, like, all the information that we can display on a classical search engine. The reason I asked uh, who speaks German and who speaks French is because, as you notice, we have some examples here that are taken from some search engines that we build, and they are mostly in French. Uh, but I think you can follow. <laughs> so. so here is another example. This is an uh, internal search engine that we develop at Adeline. And you can also have all the suggestions, like did you mean? So for example, when you, the, the customer didn't write, like did a misspell in, uh, in the search bar. The sorting here in this example, you can even display the result by map, because for these clients, like he wanted to have all the document uh, regarding the, the different country. Here you have the pagination with all the page, like you can have a lot of results. And here uh, the same, like all the facet, like you can see we can have a lot of facets once again, to help the customer and the users to get to the, to the product, uh, to, to what he's looking for. So as you can notice, there's plenty of space. Uh, so you, you can, as, yeah, in just one call to the search engine, you can display plenty of things. It's not like a airplane dashboard, but there's plenty of space. Now let's move on and see how, what happens when we are reducing the, stream, the screen size. So now is on a mobile device. So as you can see, we still have a lot of information, but Search Engine had to adapt and try to display the result in another way. For example, here we don't have the, um, the facet uh, displayed by default, so the, the user has to click on it to see all of them, and you see like uh, main, main, the, the, the main facet, like they will hide a little bit of your, of your screen. So this is another way to display um, information. But still, we have place for facets, even if not on the first screen. Yeah. So same here, like we took exactly the same example that before on the laptop, but on a mobile device. And you can see you still have the information, but display in another way. 
So the search engine started to adapt a little bit, but yeah, it's, you see a small adaptation there. Okay, the last example uh, with the same, uh, with the same um, uh, search engine than before. So now we can have like only one result before we had like three or four. The same for the facet, uh, the filter, and yeah, all the information again. Okay. So now let's move on to uh, the real subject. So the issues and challenge uh, with the voice search. So first of all, like we saw, we have the first challenge is a lack of space. Like we don't have anymore the, the, the device, the visual device, so we'll need to adapt uh, regarding the, the, the display information. Large amount of results. So you, you, you just saw before all the pagination, all the results that you can have. Here with the voice search, we will not be able to list all the results that uh, the search owner will get. So we, we really need to narrow uh, the request to know exactly what the, um, the user is looking for. How to clarify, like we saw before with agendas, like the search engine uh, suggests something to the, to the user. With the voice search, we will need to really to clarify and to have the exact request uh, once again in order to give the good result. Uh, the stop word on noise in the query. So uh, users today I are more... Um, Verbose, yeah. Sorry? So the, the queries are more verbose? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And when you use uh, a classic search engine, you are um, more used to have like a keywords. But when you go to a voice search, we are more uh, willing to talk like a conversation. So we will say, I would like something instead of to put only the keywords. So this is another challenge that we will have to answer. So if you, uh, if you go from auto-completion where you just typed three letters uh, and you come to voice search, actually, the, the query will be much larger. And the last one, uh, the filter express are the search keywords. Uh, we will go deep uh, into this subject, but for example, when you have uh, organic, uh, organic tomato, for example, organic can be taken as a filter, and uh, the voice search will need to, to, to focus on what is a keyword and what can be a filter. Okay, so let's see how we, we tackle these challenges, how we, we deal with them. Uh, so before we, we start, let's see what's a classical search engine. So a search engine that displays something that you just saw on large screen on, and on mobile. So usually, no matter what search engine it is, uh, it needs an input and it's usually a, a text, filters, and some sorting information. Um, and uh, as an output, the search engine can give, of course, results, and it can give like the first page of results, the first page, like of the first 100 on, or 10 or however, um, whatever. Uh, it can also give suggestions, like did you mean something else by your query, by your request? Uh, it can give facets, and not just one, it can give several facets, and it can also give like additional information, like something that the ad admin of the search engine has pushed on in the results. We can call them marketing, marketing shortcuts. So all these things can be displayed on a screen. This is how a classical search engine works. So now the challenge will be like to move for a classical search engine to a search, uh, search voice engine. So the first step would be like translating the voice into text. And then the second step will be like um, finding out what's the intent of the user. Because uh, you can talk to a search engine, but you can have like several services, like a service that looks for locations, for store locations, and a service like, that looks like uh, for product, uh, products. So the, first, the, first step, uh, the, the second step is to, to figure out the intent. So uh, for the speech-to-text part, uh, you actually have very powerful tools provided by Google, Amazon, and all the big ones. Uh, if, however, you decide to go by yourself, it's possible, but it will be hard. We actually tried to build a prototype at Adelian, and uh, yeah, it, it works, but it's like, like it's really hard. Uh, we, um, yeah, so um, the voice, the sound waves, are translated into like uh, phonemes, and then the phon phonemes are classified, like categorized, uh, the most uh, um, uh, relevant ones, and then the other ones, and then we are searching these phonemes into a dictionary. So the quality of your speech-to-text uh, engine is uh, 
kind of related to the quality of your dictionary. For example, you might have said fan and gloves, and the, uh, the, the, the speech-to-text engine uh, finds phone and globes because your dictionary doesn't have these two words. Uh, so the, the output of the dictionary is called hypothesis, hypothesis and uh, you have like not just one, you have like probabilities and stuff like that. The second part, uh, which is like, um, what's the intent of the user? Am I searching, am I using the shop search service or the product search service? Uh, it's actually already provided out of the box with all the voice assistants out there, so being Google or Amazon. Um, so they are all using the same pattern. So the first one is the intent. Uh, the second one is uh, uh, utterances. So utterances are um, like templates. Uh, so templates of phrases that define the intent. For example, if you say, I am looking for something, then the engine will say, okay, you want to call the product search service. If you say, where is something, then the, the, the voice assistant will say, okay, you will, want, you will call the... Uh, search location service. And the last, the last um, point here, the, la the last uh, definition here is slot. Amazon co uh, uh, calls it uh, entities, is what's the parameters that you provide to the, to the service. So it's like methods and parameters. In this example, tomatoes is the parameters. I am looking for tomatoes. And uh, the, um, the intent is the product search. Very quickly on this, uh, imagine that you want to integrate your search engine, yeah, being yeah, Google or something else. Uh, in this example, I took a search engine that we built, which is called A2. Uh, it goes like this, so the device, like Google Home, for example, calls the, the, the assistant, the voice assistant, then it goes, so this one is taken from Google, so this one is, uh, yeah, uses Google terms and technology. Uh, we, we go through dialog flow, and then you need a piece of software, the, the green one, A2 proxy there, uh, that will uh, actually adapt the calls to your search engine, search engine. So you can just take any search engine and plug it in, but as you will see, you have to also adapt if you want to something relevant, if you want to have something relevant. Okay, so just to conclude this part, uh, so first of all, you will have the user speaking with his voice. The voice will be transformed to text with the functionality speech-to-text, sorry. And then you will have uh, what just Lucien talked about, the intent, utterance, and slot uh, to recognize what, uh, which, uh, which service to call and everything. And then this is where you can plug, we can connect uh, your search engine. So now the first challenge. So like I talked before, lack of space to display information. So let's go for this one. There you go. Okay. Uh, yeah. So there are two possibilities here for for when you when you're talking to a search engine. Uh, you you have uh, sometimes you can have some display, a smaller one, a small display, but you you can have it. If you look at uh, a car, you have, uh, you have, like, you can talk to the car, but the car can also display things on, on, on a screen. And also the, the assistants that are found in your, in your phone, um, they can talk to you, but they can also display something, okay? So it helps, as you will see. And, uh, yeah, the, 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 the second, the second yeah, way of interacting with a search engine is like voice only. And there it's much more difficult. You actually don't have any space to display anything. You just talk to the user. So second one, second one large amount of results. So how to narrow uh, the request? So, so there's, a, there's a quick win solution here. Uh, so uh, actually the search engine will have to respond to the user with a question because you cannot respond with results, facets, suggestions, and other information. Uh, other information. So you will have to respond with a question. So why not, why not taking filters? You say, okay, let's pick a filter and then ask the user, which brand do you like? Uh, what flavor for the ice cream? Um, but the issue there is that you can have many facets, and uh, yeah, the, the challenge is which facet to choose for the first question, for the second question. 
There's also a pre prerequisite there is that your search engine has to have facets, and the facet that it has must be relevant. Uh, it can be not the case. Uh, so if we go further, um, this is the example of a search engine that doesn't have facets. So actually, uh, this is an example taken from Wikipedia, and we are using here a technology called Carrot, Carrot Search. There is a plugin for Elasticsearch for Solar, so you can plug it to, to, yeah, to any search engine. Um, so when you search for orange, oranges, uh, actually, this is ambiguous, and Wikipedia doesn't have facets. It, it cannot say, oh, okay, what kind of oranges. Uh, so you could use what we call clustering. So this is like Carrot Search does that for us. And you could uh, respond to the user with a question. That is, do you mean the color? Do you mean the city in California? Do you mean uh, the company? Do you mean the fruit? So yeah, this is the disambiguation part. So the first one will be the stop word or noise in the query. So you will see how to, to get rid of this. Yeah, so this is uh, when you get off-road. What, what, does, what does that mean? If, if you're using a voice assistant, you will notice that sometimes the voice assistant says, I don't understand what you just asked me. And then you say, well, I'm just asking you the same thing as usually, but I'm just using some other words. Why can't you adapt? Uh, so the thing is that when you define utterances within your voice assistant, actually you have to be precise. You, you have to, to say your utterances are I am looking for, I am searching for, uh, please give me, no, no, no. So you have to define all these ways of interacting with a, the with a search engine. But this is like uh, limited. And uh, there's a reason for why these voice assistants function like that, why they work like that, is because we have a history there. We have 20 years of search engines that are made for text. So the voice assistant tries to narrow your search to a keyword. Um, but if you go off-road, for example, yeah, you, you ask a question that the, the search engine and the voice assistant has never seen. For example, this one, I'm searching for Simon Wilnauer conferences on, on Elasticsearch. Um, or, yeah, uh, what's the best way to plug this specific cable? It's like real word, and if the admin of the voice assistant hasn't thought about this way of asking the search engine, yeah, you cannot respond. So what, how can we tackle that? Um, so actually, yeah, we, we have a demo on this, but we'll go faster because we have another demo in the end uh, with a real voice assistant. Um, in order to remove the noise in the query, there's a notion of stop words. Now, you might say, uh, well, stop words are yeah, no longer fashion anymore because you can use a common terms query. Those who work with Elasticsearch know what I mean. Uh, actually, will, common terms query will not help, and you will understand why. Uh, if I take this, this query, I am looking for chocolate, please, could you help me with that? The one and single interesting word in this query, the keyword that you have to pass to the search engine is chocolate. All the other ones are just noise. Okay? So when, uh, and these words are found in the query that you sent to the engine, and they are not found in the products that you have indexed, for example. So they are not stop words from the common terms query point of view, OK? Um, and you even might have these words like looking or help or could uh, yeah, or please. Uh, you might even have them within your index indices, but they are not that um, frequent. So they are not stop words from the common terms query point of view. So actually, yeah, this is the pitfall. Uh, so what's the solution? The solution would be to index the queries. Okay? So actually, you, you will take the logs, the logs of your queries, the logs from your users, and you will index those. And then 
you will run some aggregations on those, on top of those, and you will see uh, which are the real stop words considering your use case. So in this example, so I will not show you the demo for that. It's really technical and it's connected to Elasticsearch. But the idea is like, you have here on the left the, uh, the, um, the index, the indi the, what you indexed uh, from the, the query logs, so the logs that you indexed. And uh, they are, um, they are uh, stemmed, so this is why you say like way, look, instead of looking, searching, they are stemmed. So you, you can see that the word I is really frequent, seven times, because I indexed some queries there. Actually, I indexed all the queries that we have in the, in the, in the examples. You will notice also though that four is very frequent, and so M, the search to. Then you say, okay, we'll apply the standards, the standard stop words. And you will see that, for example, four disappeared because it is part of the standard stop words in Elasticsearch, for example, or in Lucene. But I is not part of that list. And neither search, searching, or looking. So yeah, you can add some custom stop words which are really connected to your use cases and then remove them. So here in the third table, you can see that we removed searching, looking, and uh, yeah, we removed some other additional words. Okay, so this is like an admin job. And the third one, the, the fourth one, the fourth table is like you can also take into account shingles, like you can, you can take expressions that really repeat frequently. For example, I am searching, it actually repeats three times. So you can say, okay, this is noise. I will just remove that. So much for this, we will move on. Yeah, I think we have to go like a little bit faster. Oh, uh, uh, no, we have, yeah, we okay. have 15 minutes left, so. Okay. Uh, so the last one is filter express as a uh, search keyword. So like I said before, we'll see some examples. So maybe we can move on. Yeah, for example, here, um, so we have organic tomato, for example. And organic can be taken as a filter in order to uh, improve the request. We have another example. Simon Wilner talks on elastic shirt. Simon can be a filter and can be a filter like type of speaker. So maybe you want to go for the solution. Yeah, so the, the, the idea is that uh, when you're talking to, like, with, a, with, a, with your voice, uh, uh, yeah, th these terms uh, will end up as, uh, as keywords, but they are actually filters. So, yeah, as you said, so the, the first solution is that you, you actually extract entities. So how do you extract entities? That's another part of the story. Uh, we will not talk talk about that here, but yeah, you figure out a way to extract entities from the user's query. And for the first example, which is organic tomatoes, you say, ah, okay, the text is tomato, and actually the organic there is a filter, which is, and then you can just ask your search engine, organic flag equals true. And then you have the, the query that you will call uh, on your API. Uh, on the second example, uh, you might uh, realize that the, the, the name there is actually a speaker, so you place it into, into the speaker um, filter, and then uh, you end up with a query that says the text is Elasticsearch, the speaker is Simon Wilnauer, and uh, the type of the document that you want to return is a talk. Yeah? So you just rephrased the query, which initially was just a text, uh, and it actually contained filters, uh, you rephrased it uh, in order to express filters and text. The second solution is like, uh, is more simpler, like you don't do anything, you are just taking the query and throw it out to the search engine and hope the, the scoring algorithms will work for you. So yeah, you hope for the best. Um, and this might work, but you, there are some conditions there. For example, if organic is just a flag that says true or false, this will not work because you will not see organic as a word into your data. So um, you have to be careful here. Uh, yeah, you have, for example, if you have a, 
a product base that says, yeah, tomatoes, and the organic indication says just a flag with true and false as a value, you might want to transform that to real text and say organic text equals organic or something. And the second solution will work for you. Okay, so here is like uh, the takeaway. So uh, this is what we saw before. So first of all, the user will speak with his voice. Then he will translate to the speech to text functionality. And then the intent and the utterance and the slot part, what we saw before, just to know exactly what uh, services to call and what are the variables. And then you put your search engine. And here are the, um, let's say, the answer that we found for these different challenges. So for example, for the first one, in order to, uh, to have information, even if we don't have like visual uh, device, we need to ask question. For the second one, we need to add filter in order to narrow and to go directly to the result, the, the, the more relevant result. For the f uh, if you want to add something. Uh, yes, yeah, so, so uh, the, the, the first takeaway is that the, in order, you, you don't respond with a response. <laughs> you respond with a question, question. Yeah. yeah. And the second one is that uh, you don't paginate the results or you don't display 10 results, you actually add filters to the query so you narrow down the, the result. Because when you talk to the user, you can maybe say like, show one product or two products, but not more. Uh, for the third one, to how to clarify, so we saw the facet, the clusterization and the personalization. So uh, we, we um, yeah just uh, we didn't dig into the personalization uh, uh, thing there, but it's it's really important because personalization allows a search engine to be more relevant, and especially this goes especially for voice search. Uh, if someone al asks for let's say milk on a uh, on a grocery store, uh, depending who asks the question, the response might be different. Yeah, yeah. Is it body milk? Is it milk for babies? Or yeah. But if you know the user that asks the question, then you can be more relevant. And actually, you add filters to the query, which are taken from the user profile. So this is personalization. We we actually didn't dig into this one, but it's a, it's a way to clarify the the request. Uh, in order to avoid the noise, so you need to index query and to create your list of stop words uh, regarding to your own use case and uh, the, the most relevant uh, stop word for your, for your problem, for your issues. And last okay. one, so the filter that we just saw. Um, yeah, maybe you want to take this one. Yeah, so, so this is the query rewriting. Yeah, the, the one that we saw that you, you have like... A, uh, you have like a, a queries that are expect, expressed as just text, and you rewrite the query to say text and filters. Yeah. So, or the second solution, you make the filters searchable and hope for the scoring algorithm to work for you. So uh, we actually, um, yeah, have a have a demo for it for you, uh, which, yeah, kind of emphasizes this part. Uh, so we will try to make it work. Uh, so. Yeah, we, as you saw, we took a search engine, which is a classical one. We are kind of on this architecture. You took a search engine that is this one, and we tried to query it through the Google um, Assistant. OK. Ah, sorry, I have to stop the presentation in, for order f in order for this to work. So here it is. So Margot, do you want to take this? So just bear with us. Uh, it's, a, like it's a live demo. And um, as you will see, there's a lot of like, yeah, machine learning and stuff there. And uh, the, the search engine like, needs to, to adapt. Uh, if it's not working, we will try to hack it. But uh, yeah, this is the... Yeah, so I think we'll, we'll skip this one. So the, the, in order to launch the application, you actually need to say, talk to the engine or something like that. We'll just click, uh, yeah, we'll just click on the... So as, as you see here, it's like a, an right. interface. All right, let's get the test version of A2. 
Yeah, Welcome. We, we what are you that. looking for today? So, if you pause a little bit here, uh, what you just saw here, it's, it's a simulator. So the advantage of this, and it's the same on a phone, you have some display there. So the, the, the search engine actually can give you hints on what's accepted and what's not accepted. Okay, so this is, and uh, if you look, uh, if you look, uh, ju just a few seconds, if you look here, actually the input can be voice, can be touch screen, or can be even keyboard. You can even write uh, queries to the, to the, to the engine. Uh, no, no, so the mic is there, yeah. I found 920 products for you. What is your favorite brand? So what just, what just happened there is that uh, we had the intent there. The, so Google uh, Assistant uh, def, uh, found the intent, which is I am searching for products because I said I am looking for. If Margot would have said um, uh, I would like uh, some chocolate, it might not have worked because the intent was not defined like that. Okay, so this is something that you see on, on, your, on your phone. Uh, and this is how the engine responded, actually, because there are too many results there. We cannot display 920 results for this particular search. We cannot display the fastest there, but the, the piece of software that we placed as an adapter just chose a, a facet out there, which happens to be the brand, and uh, just responded with a question, okay? Because, yeah, we have too many results there. So, yeah, let's try. Let's try. This one is difficult to pronounce, but, yeah, we will try, uh, like, lint. Yeah, <laughs> okay. You have to talk louder, I think. <laughs> The best product I have found for you is Chocolat Noir Poire Lint. Okay, so bear for the results? French. It's a, uh, yeah, it's a, uh, it's French there, so the the pronunciation is like. Uh, uh, so yeah, this is the the first product. So uh, actually, we have not many results. So the engine could, I mean, we took the chance to ask to to answer with a result. Let's say we don't like this one. And then, yeah, we provide the, a way to go further. Yes. Well. Yeah, that was a yes, but yeah, it's a... Uh, yeah, we can stop and uh, we'll, just, uh, we'll just send a yes, like by keyword and... Uh, Yeah, yeah, just uh, okay. Okay, so then we we have. The Here are the next three products. Okay, now let's imagine that uh, this is not enough. So, for example, if uh, we choose another brand, and we still have too many products. Okay, so yeah, we have to go from the beginning there. So. Maybe you can speak I found mic, so 920 then. products for you. What is your favorite brand? Ah, so no surprise there. Uh, yeah, go for Milka, yeah. There should. Milka. Well, this one I is... I misunderstood your request. Okay. Try again, maybe, yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's I found 38 products for you. Should I look in which department? Okay, so this second iteration, uh, there are actually still too many products. They still cannot be displayed. So uh, you could decide to ask a second question, okay? So to say, yeah, okay, what happens there? Frozen foods. <laughs> That was I misunderstood foods. your yeah. request. If you speak in the mic, maybe it will, it will be better. Just try. So we will just uh, choose some some ice cream there. So, so yeah. Have to go for, uh, to the right? 
No, 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 that's, that's okay. If you say uh, again frozen foods, it will work, yeah. Frozen food. Yeah. That's... The best product I have found for you is glacé's chocolat and vanille milka. Do yeah. you want more results? So here, yeah, you, as you notice, you need, need a second iteration, so you display the facet at first, which was the brand, and then another facet, which was the department, and then there were, like, not many results, so it was, uh, it was okay to display them. So let's say we don't want any more results, and, uh, yeah, I think, uh, I don't know if we have more time or not. Uh, you can say no, yeah, or thank you, or, yeah. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, there's some noise here, so the it, it waits for uh, for some more input. Yeah. <laughs> I misunderstood your request. Okay, so just, just type no or thank you. Or, uh. You are welcome. Have a great time at Berlin Buzzwords. Okay, so that ends the, the conversation with the, with the search engine. So, yeah. Uh, so, thank you for, for being present and for your patience. I hope the, the French examples didn't bother you too much. Uh, I don't know if we have on yet time for some questions. If you have a question, we will be happy to respond. And if not, we'll be around uh, till the end of the, of the conference. Okay. Thank you for the talk. Uh, can you customize um, uh, suggestions somehow? So like if when you were searching for chocolate, you don't get like buttons or anything like outside of your search scope. So like if you have like a database of products, can you customize uh, voice to text to only understand this kind of products you have in your database? Uh, so so, so the, the, the question is uh, if we can customize the search engine in order for it to, like, to, to already know that we are looking for some specific product or... Um, I'm not sure that I understood the, 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 the point. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah we need to... <laughs> So actually, I'm, I'm answering with the question. <laughs> <laughs> so like uh, to customize the text uh, or the voice to text uh, engine yeah. uh, to only suggest uh, keywords from your database, not a generic keywords. The, the, the suggestions that you saw there are not generic, are actually facets that the search engine returns. So you have seen, uh, I don't know if we can scroll up, uh, the the... Yeah, when, when you say, yeah, for example, uh, if I say uh, I'm looking for chocolates, All the right. suggestion Here's the there. test version of A2. Welcome. What are you looking for today? I am looking for chocolate. So okay, what, uh, what I'm talking like, about, like this word set, for so, example, or dairy, like these kind of words? Ah, okay. Uh, so... Yeah, the, the dairy I found there, 920 uh, products for you. What is your favorite yeah, brand? Okay, so I understand now. So the, these suggestions are actually uh, real, real suggestions. I mean, they are present in the database. Uh, dairy there was not present in the database, but actually these are just suggestions. You can say something else because it displays the first five, uh, the first five value for your facets, but not the other ones. So you actually can say here any word you like. So the engine is like kind of, it has to take your input into account. And if your input is dairy, let's say, yeah, it, it, it takes it and it says, okay, I'll send that to the engine. But the answer is like void. There's no, there's no result there. So this is, yeah, this is a risk and uh, you cannot handle that actually. It's a, uh, yeah, this is the machine learning behind the voice recognition and stuff like that that would get better and better. So now this one was trained with several voices because we were several persons to work on this demo. And yeah, it's normal that 
maybe it does not understand uh, Margot, for example, uh, right, l like that. But there it should be taken into account. Yeah, so it's actually an information that it's pushed to the engine. Yeah. Th thanks for the question. Yeah. Next question. Yeah. Hi, thank you. Um, you mentioned that one of the things we don't have with a voice assistant is, uh, you called it marketing shortcuts, but I think we're all more familiar with it as ads. Uh, what, uh, there's a lot of businesses that would be very upset about that. Um, do you have any suggestions on how we can yeah. address so, that? Uh, actually, sometimes we call them best bets. Uh, they can be something else than ads. It depends on the search engine. If the search, any, search engine is it's, it's an enterprise search engine, uh, they are not actually ads. They are something w that the administrator of the search engine wants to push to the user because he knows the, the business, he knows the, 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 the domain, and uh, he knows that maybe the best result for this particular query is this landing page that I already prepared. So yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, it's an issue, yeah? Uh, how, how do you push like publicity or admin, rela admin uh, um, related uh, results? Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's up to you to, to, to build up the, the, the answer that you want. So you could have like an algorithm that says, okay, I have a suggestion from an admin or I have a publicity there. Uh, you could say, yeah, is it relevant? Is it uh, really, really relevant, more relevant than the results there? Can I take the risk to display that? So it's actually the, the green box that it's the adapter between your search engine and the voice assistant that can tell. So it's actually something that you decide when you build the, the adapter and the, the voice search engine. Okay, and we take the last question because we are terribly out of time. Yeah, okay. Hi, thank you for the um, interesting talk. So I have a very small question that you spoke about uh, limiting your search results to uh, you were using uh, Carrot for clustering, faceting, and personalization. I'm just wondering how do you club them and how exactly do you um, kind of narrow the results down using that? Uh, so actually, Carrot is not used for personalization, but uh, uh, it's, it's used for, for clustering, for clustering yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, th th that's, that's a great question. Uh, so um, clustering algorithms actually allow you to bring facets to some results that do not have facets. Uh, and then uh, it's up to you how you work with that. So uh, you could say, for example, the, the, the example with oranges there was really ambiguous because you had clusters that has, had come kind of the same size. Okay, so you could have um, like some algorithms there, some, you can even plug machine learning there uh, to say, okay, uh, when I don't have facets but I have too many results, I will try to use clusters and then if I have like two or three clusters that are as big and they are like, they stand out, uh, I will ask a question to say, okay, please give me another, another hint, like, and Another hint means like you add another word to the query or like, like and you, you can even take suggestions from the clustering algorithms. For example, if we go back to the, uh, to the presentation, uh, it was, yeah, so uh, I don't know where it was, yeah, yeah so. Uh, so, yeah, you, you, can, you could either, even use the words from here. So you can say color, you can say California, you can say orange SA, which is the company. So, yeah. And this is just a graphical display, but you actually can tell more about that because you can tell that orange SA, it's a company. So you could also have some additional treatment there uh, in order to transform these clusters into real questions that you ask the user. So you could transform this to questions like, is it orange the company? Because this is Wikipedia, so you, you could uh, have some, some additional information there. Is it orange the color? So yeah. Uh, you have some more work to do there in order to adapt your search engine, but yeah, it's, uh, it's more complicating than just displaying facets, uh, uh, f filter suggestions f coming from facets. Yeah. 
Um, thank you so much for, for this fascinating talk. This was really inspiring. Thank you for coming thank you. and thanks to uh, Berlin Buzzwords for having us. Yeah. So and thank you, you all of you for, for having come.